All right, back over here on Alex's 78 Power Wagon. We're trying to get it to this car show here in a few weeks, and there's a lot of loose ends to tie up to make it happen. Nothing critically hard, but still a lot of unknowns. Um, this is not the correct gas tank. These trucks would have had a driver's side, like 30 gallon, kind of long, rectangular molded plastic tank. Um, they're super hard to find though. No one reproduces them yet, so it's really hard to get them. Um, you can try and find them in scrap yards and salvage yards, but even if you do, are they cracked out? Are they garbage? We don't know, so you know what? But we want to make this car show, and this is not the ultimate final restoration on this truck. This is a, we can make this thing safe and reliable to drive around locally here, and then we can really do it nicely in the long run. So for now, this tank will suffice, it'll be fine. Um, I'll clean it out, there's a little bit of dirt and dust in it, so I'll kind of hose it out, wash it out, let it sit out in the sun for a few days. No moisture in there. I'll have to plug this hole up here. Up here is where we should have the sending unit, so I'll have to measure down, get the depth of the tank, and see how deep we need the sending unit arm to lay. Get one ordered in. Here is where the filler neck will go. Um, you can see where he had drilled a hole here in the side of the quarter panel. The one up there is the factory original location, but obviously right now we're gonna go with what he had to make it work. So this, I'll have to get some kind of filler neck, and it'll, it'll come down through here and head towards the tank. And you can see the bands that hold it in, these straps here, still hiding under here. So we're gonna get that figured out. The next thing I wanna do is potentially pull off the rear really quick. There's really nothing holding it in. Um, there's no drive shaft yet. The brake lines aren't connected yet. It's as simple as disconnecting the leaf springs really quick, popping it off and we can give this thing a quick scuff and spray it with some black paint, make it look a little better. Um, then I gotta run New rear brake lines, probably redo the drums in the back because I don't know how good they are. Um, at least some new shoes and wheel cylinders. Um, we're gonna have to run fuel lines. You can see I've got one exhaust pipe heading over there. So we've got to get the exhaust run. Um, so a gas tank, including sending unit, filler neck, brake lines, rear brake drums, shoes, exhaust, brake lines running all the way back here, checking on those, spraying some paint back here. And that pretty much ties up what needs to happen in the rear. Oh, we want to get rid of this hitch. This is not factory. This is not original, this hitch. Um, and this blocks the bumper from being mounted on here. So we're going to get rid of this hitch. That doesn't belong there. You can see someone welded this thing in pretty good. So I'm going to get the plasma cutter or big ass grinder wheel and we'll cut this thing off and you guys will see all that. So that should finish up the rear of this truck. Then as we come towards the front, we can talk about a couple of things that need to get figured out up here. You can see a list I had already made back when I got this thing running in the fall. This is out of her duster. It's a little slant six radiator, but I was just mocking it in here to see kind of height and depth of what we need. So I got to get a radiator in this thing. We've got our alternator already. Um, we'll run our, obviously our hoses for the radiator and plumb it. Um, do an oil change, all the typical fluid stuff like that. Fuel line running all the way back from the tank up here. Um, it goes right here on the chassis, so we'll probably run a new fuel line, get all that routed. Um, you need to get the ignition module back on to run the ignition over there to the coil. Battery, then uh, power steering pump goes over here, get the power steering on. And it's just a couple little auxiliary things like that. So pretty much radiator, fuel lines, fuel going to it, tie up the ignition, power steering, and uh, maybe pull some plugs and, you know, we can do some real tuning and maintenance stuff like that thereafter the brakes obviously the front discs here are not in the best of shape it's a bit of a job to replace the hub and the discs you just don't pull them off like uh you know most performance cars because these are eight lug dana 44 fronts so i'll probably look into maybe replacing them right now but if not i'll at least pull them off and maybe see if i can clean up the surface of them really carefully and it should be fine enough to drive around here locally it's not something that we're taking here on a long long road trip nothing like that Oh yeah, we're gonna need shocks, front shocks and rear shocks too. And that pretty much ties up what needs to happen up front. And then we go into the interior. You've already, seen Al you've already seen Alex has done a really cool job recovering her seat, getting the dash and everything kind of together. So it's good in here. Um, the only issue is one, she didn't want to start off the key last time. So we got to figure that little gremlin out. And if I didn't lose you there already, that's our laundry list of random odds and ends to get this thing running, at least locally. Why we clean it? You don't need that in there. All right, we got it washed out. I'll let it sit out here for a day or two and dry. Now we can get our measurement. Looks like just a little over 10 inches, so we'll go with a 10 inch deep 
uh, sending unit and we'll see what we can find online for some research. I have no idea what I'll find, but I'm sure we can get something. It's not every day I admit that I make mistakes. Actually it is because you know what? I got so excited and ahead of myself that I forgot since this whole thing isn't put together and I'm not starting to truck off the key. You dumbass Frank, you gotta turn the key on in order for it to shift. Hello. Well, at least that takes care of one of the many problems we gotta fix. All right, we'll just put enough jack pressure underneath it just to take some weight off of it, which I think that even right there would suffice. Yeah, so this way we're not putting upward pressure on the leaf spring, and then we can pop off these bolts here and then pick up the backside of the leaf, get the fronts off, and then we can just roll this whole thing out. So now that I've loosened down this bolt, there's still a bit of pressure from body weight and it's not exactly equal yet. So this leaf spring is gonna kind of put a little bit of tension here on this bolt through and I can't just pull it out. So get behind it, get right behind the backside of the head of this bolt and pull outward with this wrench. As I pull, loosen it with the ratchet and it'll come out. like that. I'll just watch my hand because this thing might snap up a little bit. Boom, just like the zoom spring popped up just a little bit but that's it she's now free except now my dowel is stuck in there nice i'll have to kick that out all righty okay the axle's ready to slide out i played a bit of tetris with some really backyard kind of looks unsafe but trust me structurally strong it's tough it's not going anywhere. We've got multiple avenues of support there. So without further ado, out comes the Dana 60. Cool. Now we can do some simple stuff. Like we can pop off this plug, check if it's got any fluid in it. Hope it does. Then we can redo brake lines and uh, get a quick scuff and paint on it. So a quick evaluation of the rear. I popped the drain plug off here and I looked down in there and she's dry so likely either the rear casing seal or the front bearing seal has gone maybe a combination of both but we'll get this thing filled up for now and we'll see where it starts leaking you can see the gears inside there but there is not much fluid down there at all pretty dry all right moving on brake lines old brake lines like this likely are gonna have to go because what happens is once you get brake line wrench on there if you're new to working on cars, they're angled right here to get right onto the fitting, the brake line, instead of being straight on and it might run into the backside of your drum. So now what usually happens is once you loosen these up, this little fitting right here is actually supposed to be able to move independent from the brake line. But once it rusts onto here for so much time, it's gonna do this. You see how they're twisting together? You'll likely never get this to break free of the brake line and what's going to happen is it's going to start twisting the brake line and then it'll just snap so we're just going to have to replace brake lines and that's not the biggest deal in the world okay you can just see all the twisting now that brake line's compromised i would not use it you get this thing off clean up um you can see that this brake line this one's already been broken so we're going to definitely replace that one and the same deal over here too much rust on it if we go ahead and try and breaker free I guarantee you it'll start spinning the line and it does see that and it's just gonna wind up breaking it so we're gonna do new brake lines fill up our axle housing and then uh, get this thing a quick scuff put a little paint on it call it a day what do you think buddy pretty crazy huh yeah hey bud I know you want to see this brake line snap off all right I'll show you ready so you keep moving like this 
And I guarantee you, bud, it's going to twist off. That's what always happens because the main line is moving. And what do you know? There it is. She broke. That's that. Then they get the brake line off the housing of the axle. Right underneath here with a flat tip screwdriver on these hold down tabs and just lightly pick it up. And if one of these snaps, it's just a piece of metal that's kind of bent so you can always replace them. It's really not that difficult. And then this is the junk one coming off. So we'll get this out of here. I'm gonna start prepping this thing out. Scrape away some of this old grease on here too. What in Kentucky Fried Chicken? Joe Dirt Espresso Condition do we got going on down here? Listen, there's no time for judgment. We got to get this truck put together. I don't, no, don't look over there. <laughs> My two by nine, chicken bob, billy bob. Just turn the camera on. We got to get to work here. <laughs> what the fuck? All right, a little bit of wire brush, a little bit of hand sanding, a little bit of this and that. It's not too bad. Got the old girl up on jack stands. So now I'll pop these wheels off, keep those from getting any overspray on them. Then we can disassemble the drum assemblies, get new shoes, wheel cylinders, all the goodies are placed in there. And then I can also get this part out here that I haven't scuffed down yet. Drum backing plates, all that stuff. And you can hear, pretty crunchy. So we're gonna wanna replace that. Another little thing, if you're not familiar with rear ends, when you talk about an open differential, right here you see how you've got one tire spinning and the other one is not. You'll notice the pinion moving with it as well. That's because this is an open differential. Um, if it was a locker, then both tires would be moving right now. When I go to move this tire, the other side would move with it as well. So, quick little thing. I just dipped my finger in there, so I stand corrected. There is fluid in this axle. It's just a little bit low. Probably, uh, I don't know, about an inch or two low in there. So we'll get it refilled. But there is gear oil in there. So that makes me happy. You guys can watch it as we rotate around the tire. Yep. There's gear. Pretty cool. Alrighty, tires are off. See you back in the morning. The next day we're back out here and I'm gonna pull off these drums. So this way I can go to O'Reilly's or Napa or wherever and get some new shoes. New wheel cylinders here on the back side. You see them there and uh, kind of refurbish the actual stopping power here on this axle before I go ahead and spray it. We'll get it all back together mechanically, run the brake lines, and then we can get a little ch -ch on the ch -ch. So in order to take this axle apart, you've got these, you've got these eight bolts here in the front. Once you pop these off, this flange here is actually the axle itself. The axle should come out. Um, then once we get that out, you can remove, there's a couple lock nuts and like maybe like a two and a three eighths back there and you get those guys out. Hi, Odie. Hey, bud. And once you get those nuts out, then you can pull the uh, bearings out of there and then you can actually pull off this whole drum hub assembly and then we can get the shoes and all that stuff. So we'll do that now. All right, so these bolts are 9 sixteenths. We'll hold the drum here from moving on us as we loosen. Crack these suckers loose. And you can see the silicone on the back because when you seal this thing back up, we'll show you the steps, but you wanna put some RTV silicone on it to stop the uh, axle from leaking because you actually don't pack these bearings with grease. The, uh, the actual actual housing and tube runs all the way down and it gets lubricated with the axle grease itself from the entire axle, which is kind of cool instead of having its own self little, you know, mashing and all that lube inside the bearings and packing it. It's gonna come out, but you can see the silicone where someone, you know, got this thing sealed off before. So we'll tap it out real quick, get her out. All right, let's pop this axle out. There's some taps. Cool. Put these bolts back in just to hold it from flying out this way. Tapped it. Okay. And now you can see inside here. 
what I was talking about before, where there are these big kind of lock nuts and retainers, so we'll get that all disassembled, and then we can pull off this whole drum. Will it clear the Super B? All right, we're gonna have to push the B button. Now we got room to work. Cool. Looks like the splines are in pretty good shape. I'm not seeing anything missing. I don't think anyone was doing drop clutch burnouts in this thing. Obviously they weren't because this thing's a automatic, partially a joke. So we'll get this thing wiped down, cleaned up, and then we'll continue our disassembly here. You can see what I was talking about with this being um, bearing sets that share the axle grease. Now this is your axle lube back here that flows through the whole casing of the rear end, which is kind of cool. Um, instead of having to pack these bearings with grease in your palm like you usually do, this is just getting lubricated by the axle itself. So uh, I've got to go grab, I think it's a two and three eighths socket to get this big sucker off of here. And then we can pop this out and then the whole assembly will come on out. Okay, Rain decided it wanted to join the party, so we're gonna take one step above it and outsmart it. So we'll get this over here and protect my kind of bare metal, rusty metal axle and uh, continue the job. All right, we've got our little comfortable environment to work now. So let's go take a run to the auto parts store, get that big socket, and then we'll continue the job. Okay, I found one of these big sockets over at Napa and it's actually not a two and three eighths like I thought it was, it's a two and nine sixteenths. And this axle, to the best of my understanding, is out of a M880 military Dodge truck. Um, the casting number here is a C30255 Dana 60. The uh, little tab for the gear ratio down there is already worn out. I can't even read it, but pretty sure, you know, this is a military axle. And so now that we pulled out the axle, um, the only thing that I did here off camera was there's this little locking tang that goes was in here like this, and there's one on the other side. So I just popped that out, got behind it with a screwdriver and lightly pulled. So that guy came out, put him up there. There's that big locking nut on the outside. So we get this big round style. So this specifically, they have to be the round style. And then we'll get this on here like that. And it was already pretty loose because these shouldn't be ultra tight because you have to get preload on the bearings. You don't want this to be so cinched down that you actually lock up the bearings, so. Yep, you can see she's coming off already. Uh -huh. It's fine thread, so it's going to take a second. You can see gouge marks on it from people in the past who probably couldn't find one of these suckers and went at it with who knows what tools. But that is the proper method right there, is getting those big round sockets. So here's our outer retaining nut. And then you can see the bearing in there. So we'll get this pop backward a little bit here on the drum. You saw that bearing pop forward. So I'll reach in here and try and snag her. Okay, and there's our bearing. And looking at it, it doesn't look terribly worn in the sense of major heat marks on it, but I do see some, some lines in it. So now that we got the outer bearing and the locked uh, nut out of there, we can get the drum out. We should have the inner bearing part of it. Oh yeah. These shoes have definitely seen better days, so we're definitely gonna replace these. You can see how much like grease and shit's on this, so we don't want that because you're not gonna have any stopping power. So we'll get new shoes on here and the wheel cylinders that actually push out on the shoes and expand them to lock into your drums. Let's see the surface of them. It doesn't feel terrible. I'm not quite sure how hard these are to get and come by locally, so we'll look into that. Probably can get away with reusing these right now um, with some new shoes on it and uh, you know, not be driving this thing across country, but locally should be all right. So we'll go ahead and repeat the same stuff on the other side and we'll be good to go. Oil 
the axle housing shares gear oil all the way down through here and lubricates the uh, bearings. And if this gear oil is getting out into here, well, that's probably happening because the seal might be going bad. I'm checking around it. It doesn't seem terrible, but these shouldn't be too hard to find locally. So we can go ahead and replace the seal and see if we can get some new bearings as well to prevent this. Because if we get oil and uh, grease like that on the inside of this brake drum, it's not going to stop and it's going to hurt the shoes and kills all the effective stopping power. And we don't need that. Well, that would explain why this wheel rotated so slowly. Someone tightened this thing way too tight. Put these lock nuts back on. You've got to torque them down just enough so that you put a little bit of preload against the drums, but you're not so much drag on them that it's actually making it almost impossible to remove and therefore putting so much rolling resistance on the wheel that you're going to burn that, that bearing out. So I wouldn't be surprised to see if this bearing is totally torched. Okay, let's see what this one looks like. I am very surprised to see this thing is not completely burnt up. But uh, yeah, whoever messed with this thing, it must have been recently enough that they torqued it down so much that it didn't cause too much damage. You can actually see a bend outer girdle that holds in the, neat, on the, the roller bearings. So yeah, we'll get some new bearings in this thing for sure. All right, what's hiding underneath this one? I can already feel a lot of outward pressure um, from the shoes pulling up against the inside of the drum. I'm trying to walk this off without dropping the whole axle off of my jack stand uh, setup out of here. The shoes are just expanded out a lot, and I can get a tool back here on the back side and draw them in a bit. So we can take tension off of the brake shoes not pushing out against the drum. We'll see how that did for us. Uh, well, that didn't help. That might have been the wrong way. So let's try it the other way. The shoes should be able to get her off and there it is cool trying to breathe that in it's like this seal was actually sealing up okay because it's pretty dry in here but way dirty just like the other one so yeah, we'll go ahead and try and get ourselves some new seals bearings races all that stuff replace the drum replace the shoes all the hardware, the wheel cylinders, pretty much the whole nines. Then we can get ourselves some brake lines bent, refill it with gear oil, make sure to overfill it a bit so this way all that gear oil gets all the way out to lube up those new bearings and we'll be good to go. Okay, I'm gonna get the drum backing plates off and this will take off the entire, obviously, assembly. And then I can redo all the shoes, the wheel cylinders, all the springs and stuff together a lot easier um, with it up on a bork bench instead of over here on jack stands bending over so we'll get this sucker off to the other side and make that much easier okay and there she is Now this will be a lot easier to slap up on a workbench and disassemble all this stuff. All right, I'm gonna retract that observation I made before as to why the drum shoes were so greasy. I thought the rear seal had maybe uh, given out, but when we looked at it, it didn't look too bad, but I noticed here some actual thick old grease. So someone packed some grease in here and I don't know where exactly they put it and why, but either way it flung out in here and that's what got all over the shoes. So I think that seal might be okay, but we'll still replace it anyway. Since we've gone this far into this project, we just may as well refurbish pretty much the whole axle. So uh, I'm gonna pull off the U-bolts, we'll get the blocks out of here, get all this stuff cleaned up in the sandblasting cabinet. Um, we'll get the leaf springs cleaned up a little bit better. Really get the axle housing cleaned up a little nicer, pull this back cover off. We'll check inside of it and make sure there's no gunk and crap in there. So yeah. 
Odie, are you the camera hog? <laughs> Get it, babes. There you go. What are you doing, puppy? I think the batteries is dying too. Probably. in the order they were at which I can mimic from that side since I didn't get a chance before they fell down but they obviously have alignment dowels in them and looks like it was like that hey buddies and of course while we're doing this label and everything passenger forward rear the orientation that things were so this way I can put it back exactly the way that it came from And I just wiped off the grease on this side of the driver's side axle and look at the heat mark here. This is the one that had way too much tight down on that outer lock nut and it was definitely putting a lot of heat on this end shaft part of the housing. So we'll check this thing out at Rogers. And yeah, there's no stopping me now. All the way torn down. Sweet. Let's pull this back cover off, see what's hiding in there. Let's find out. My only concern is that there could be old piece of metal, junk, gunk, crap, whatever, that's floating in the bottom of this casing. And then we put new gear oil in here, we put new bearings, break, um, shoes, everything, and then it sprays out crap and ruins those new bearings. So we've gone this far, we may as well pull this cover off and see what's hiding inside of it. This right here on this tab is supposed to have the gear ratio on it, but it is so weathered. I don't know if we could clean this thing up in the blasting cabinet and get a number off of it, but we can do some other techniques to kind of figure out what gear ratio we've got, but she's pretty, pretty worn. go. It actually does not look too bad in there. Pleasantly surprised. Now what I'd be looking for is a bunch of little metal shavings and crap and junk sitting at the bottom because that's where all the stuff is obviously going to settle. And while we've got this open too, we can inspect the teeth here on the ring gear and look for any sort of hot spots or uneven wear patterns. But they actually look fairly good. Um, on this gear though, as we rotate it around, should be able to pull off a gear ratio. So here we've got a little bit of stamping on here. We've got 10, 5A3, Dana, D, and then 32503. Then B30242, 46-13, but that's not exactly what we're looking for. We've got 805 right there. That'd be extremely tall ratio if we had that. The front pinion seal is good because it's not leaking out the nose right now as this thing is tipped down like this, so that's cool. So yeah, we're looking down in here right now. You can see a couple of little things right here. A little bit of muck and gook, a little bit of crap. Nothing terrible though. So this thing will be easily cleaned up. I'll uh, we'll dump the rest of this gear oil out, spray this thing out with some car cleaner and uh, she should be good to go. a 
couldn't find anything definitive online. So you know what? I just did it the old school way. I counted 46 teeth on the ring gear and there are 13 teeth from what I could just see through here on the pinion. So if we do some quick math, we do the 46 divided by 13, get 3.5, 3.538. So 3.54, essentially a 354 uh, rear gear ratio on this truck. Cool. All right, we just got here to Rogers. I'm gonna get all this stuff over in the dip tank real quick, get a hot wash on it and get it cleaned up. And have I ever mentioned how freaking awesome it is having Roger to learn from and be able to just drive over here and do all this stuff? Really, seriously, we're very blessed to have Roger. I'm gonna quickly punch and label all of my parts that I wanna keep on their respective sides. So this one came from the passenger side, so I'll give it a peek. Voila, stay organized, don't lose your parts. Okay, so these four go to the U-bolts. Um, these ones go to the leaf springs, and these two go to those hangers. So the one with the castellated nut and the one without the nuts go to the leaf spring. All right, the first batch of stuff, all of our hardware, uh, axles, the axle cover, we'll get the stuff nice and hot washed. Using the drum, we'll get the whole drum assembly split apart now too. And then we can get this backing plate washed. We'll blast these off. out the back bearing on the front side with a big old hammer chisel and Roger's gonna give us the old tricky technique of welding a nice bead on this race and then it'll just make it shrink up Make it look like you've done this before, Roger. Yeah, I watch YouTube. <laughs> and they watch me. Yeah, that's it. right. One down. One down. One to go. Sweet. And that's how you do it. Nice and easy. Cool. down pretty good for a before and after on how hot that tank gets and it just degreases hell yeah so i'll take this one back there and knock out the other racing bearing Give up. Didn't believe me. 
Coke. Doesn't like trying to weld through that water. <laughs> I didn't know you had your scuba license today, Roger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scuba gear on, I can't swim. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for the ding, I know it. And now we'll hang on to these for a minute and we'll pull part numbers off of them and reference these when we go to our local parts store and make sure the ones that we get are the ones that we actually want. All right, we'll hit these with one more wash because there's a little bit of gear oil still left inside the center. And then, head them in on sandblast. And since this is my first time disassembling a Dana 60 drum brake assembly, I'm gonna leave one completely assembled and I'll take this one apart, get all the parts that I need out of it to go reference at the store, the shoes, the wheel cylinders and likely a new spring kit and then i can put this one back together by mirroring what this one looks like for the races they're all timken lm 104911 for both the inner and outer races on all the bearing sets so we'll get four of those and then it looks like our bearings themselves are lm 104949 oddly the seal does not have serial number that I can see on it. Oh, actually, I think there's a tiny one right there. Yep. UH0214E. So we'll take these with us no matter what and match them up. And then let's go see if these bearings from the inside are the same as the outer ones. These ones are also LM, LM104949. And this is LM104949. So they're all the same. Cool. So the drums have a maximum diameter of 1206 inches on the inside. So we're going to measure real quick and see how much these have worn out and whether we want to actually reuse these or try and get new ones. Wow. All right, I'm draining out the remaining amount of gear oil here in the axle. Not terrible, but there's a little bit of kind of old oil in there and some new stuff. So we'll let this completely drain and I'll spray the heck out of this thing with carb cleaner tomorrow and get it nice and cleaned out. All right, we're gonna bust it loose time to get this thing fully torn down because you know what there's some junk i saw inside the axle tube here last night and uh why the hell not we may as well replace our carry bearings too see if i could show you what's hiding in here hard to see but there's some crusty in there Okay, and here's a trick Roger taught me. Put your fastener back in, give her a little tap or rail, and look at that, she's outie. And with just a really slight pry right here, we got her moving back. And she comes. How do these bearings look? All right, so now you're looking out the driver's side tube and this is what I was talking about. It's a little dirty in there. So I wanna get this thing 
over to uh, a little spray and wash and totally spray some gunk in there, degrease the hell out of it. Cause yeah, I don't know what the hell is going on in here. And we don't want to put this whole thing back together and then have all that crap wind up pushing out into the bearings and messing up the carrier or anything else. So we'll, uh, we'll clean her up. Get a little degrease action real quick. Okay, and we got the pinion out and all their races and bearings and we'll get a new set for this too. Okay, we're here at the car wash. I'm gonna get this thing down real quick. Spray it out and get cleaned up. We just picked up a nice rebuild kit for our bearings and races for the carrier. So we'll get that thing nicely put back together. Alrighty, the radiator arrived today. We're gonna to test fit it right now. See how it does in the truck. It's a champion, nice aluminum radiator. See how she fits. I'm pretty impressed because I did a whole bunch of research online and didn't necessarily know that this one would fit this truck perfectly. And it actually lines up great on both sides with uh, the factory mounting points here. You can see that slot is right there. Lines up with the bolt hole. So uh, yeah, that's gonna fit in there perfectly. And uh, we'll get a molded hose that goes from this side over to the thermostat housing coming up top. And we'll run our tranny cooler lines down there, which are already kind of hanging. We've got a, an external tranny cooler that we ordered. Um, a couple other things to tie up in here. But that's a pretty big step right there. I'm glad it fits. All right, parts have started to arrive. And this sending unit, which I just kind of eyeballed online based upon the fact that there's these six holes and two of them are closer together than the others. These ones up here look pretty similar and being that this is for a ram charger i figured well maybe this guy stuck dodge ram charger stuff in this dodge power wagon and, and what do you know slip this bad girl in there and voila all of our holes line up and it's just barely touching on the bottom so i'll carefully bend upwards the uh the tube here that draws the fuel up but uh, that's gonna work. So I just ordered online the filler neck part that should go and match here. That kind of comes off and then I've got some rubber hose that's a fuel rated hose to go across and then we've ordered another filler neck to go out the quarter panel down to it. So we should be able to make this all work. And then I went to Napa and I brought the old hose with me and kind of figured out the way that the new one would want to route. From here going down to the thermostat housing and it looks like this one I grabbed would be perfect but we're a little short here, about a few inches away. Okay, so then this one looks like, looks like this one is good on the length, but it's close, but no cigar once again. So back to the drawing board on that. 